Hello all, welcome to part 10 of hack of the day. Now in this video, we are going to look at something interesting, uh, which is really redoing the Wi-Fi SSID sniffer, uh, which I did, I think we did in uh, episode 8 with SKP. So here is what happened. Uh, I put that code out and uh, you know, it went viral because a lot of people started retweeting it and uh, places like Reddit picked up. And there a lot of developers objected to the fact uh, that, you know, really because it's using Scapy, it does not qualify from the number of lines basis. Now, I have been a low-level programmer probably for the first five years of my life uh, where, you know, I dealt with raw sockets, system programming and all of that. So I thought it would be fun to actually try and make the raw socket version uh, in Python and this is exactly what this video is about Now this free video is sponsored by security tube trainings We have a lot of fantastic trainings which I personally put together uh, the Python scripting expert iOS security Wi-Fi Linux Metasploit uh, GDB please have a look at security tube training.com and recommend to your friends. Thank you so the hardware requirements pretty much remain the same as in the previous videos. Now raw sockets. Now to be honest, it is typically not a good idea simply because raw sockets aren't too portable. At the very same time, it's a very low level access uh, to the networking APIs and uh, pretty much most people stay away from it, right? The advantages of course is that you are in full control. Now, we depended on Scapy in the last two examples to do all the sniffing from uh, the interface, giving you the packets, even doing some of the basic parsing, right? And that's how we could use has layer. However, what if Scapy was dropping packets, which is maybe, uh, you know, if the receive buffer receives too many packets in a given interval, maybe it drops it. I don't know. I'm just saying. Uh, maybe Scapy has parsing bugs, probably, right? So, apart from this, of course, pretty much raw sockets allow you to do what you want. Uh, however, the downside is also that now you handle everything. So I'm sure Scapy has been coded fantastically. Unless you can match at least that, it's probably a bad idea to try and do this yourself. But hey, you know, I wanted to give you an example of how it's done. Uh, now, before I forget, we have a new blog which we now put up, and that's called the securitytube.net hack of the day blog. Now, this necessarily isn't the mirror of all hack of the day videos, uh, but really rather other hacks along with the stuff I'm putting up in the form of videos, right? So, the Wi Fi sniffer one I'm discussing right now in the video is there as well. So please visit this URL hackoftheday.securitytube.net and subscribe to the RSS feed because I'm going to put up a couple of interesting posts here very regularly. Coming back. Now here is the raw socket version of the same program. And to be honest, uh, I really tried to go ahead and reduce the number of times to just illustrate that you can probably go ahead and do this pretty much in almost the same number of lines. Of course, as you can already see, uh, the code is pretty much unreadable, right? The link to the code, you can copy, download and try it is available at the bottom in the description. So you can click it, go to the blog post, uh, use the GitHub gist link and then try it yourself, right? But a really quick breakdown, here's what I'm doing. I'm creating a raw socket and basically saying that I'm interested in pretty much all protocols. Uh, the 0003 is really ETH underscore P underscore all. After that, I create a set called AP underscore list to track unique access points. This is where I'm going to put in all the unique MAC addresses of APs I discover over the air. Then I call raw socket dot receive from to receive new packets. Uh, this actually returns a tupule. The first element is the packet. Now, after that, what I'm doing is I'm checking for the type subtype of the packet, right? Now, keep something in mind. Uh, 
that really you have a bunch of headers before you kind of go in into the wireless one. So let me do the following. Let me create a monitor mode interface. So airmon ng check kill airmon ng start wlan zero wireshark. Right, let me sniff on mon0 real quick. Stop this and let me pick up one of these beacon frames. Now if you notice, we have the radio tap header which is 26 first and then after that we have the beacon frame which is here and basically you have the frame control field where version and type subtype together come in as the very first byte and before that everything else as you can see is clearly the radio tap header. So at byte 26, we really have version type subtype together. Uh, and this is exactly what I'm doing here. What I'm checking is whether type subtype along with version is really going ahead and matching that for a beacon frame, right? From that point on, I pick up the MAC address of the access point and check if it is already there in my list or not. If not, I go ahead and add it to my list and then I print the SSID and the MAC address. Now, this part may seem complicated, but if you tally it with Wireshark, what I'm really doing is I'm picking up the MAC address, uh, you know, just like what we did here, 36 to 42, and encoding it in hex and printing it. This part here is tricky. Uh, now, pretty much, if you look at a wireless LAN packet, you would have your WLAN header first and then the packet specific header next, which is beacon frames, right? The beacon frame header, where you have fixed arguments and then you have the tagged arguments or tagged parameters. The tagged parameters are in the form of a TLV, uh, where almost always the SSID is the first one. Now, please note, there is no guarantee that this would be the case. Ideally, I should go ahead and check for the tag number, right, which for SSID is zero. However, given that I've pretty much never seen an AP send the SSID tag parameter, you know, as a second, third or fifth value, it's always the first. I've done a little bit of optimization here by assuming it is the first TLV without verifying it, right? So you could modify the code to do those verifications as well so that you can run over the TLVs uh, and play with it, right? So I just wanted to compact the code as much as possible. And if I remove all the white spaces here, what you would see is uh, that the whole code is really 11 lines, just one line more, and I'm sure I can still compress. Uh, let's go back. And now what I'm going to do is, I will run this And if you notice, this has already started detecting the different SSIDs around along with the AP MAC addresses, right? To have it discover more APs, uh, we could also run arrow dump ng on the site so that it rotates the channels automatically for us. Then probably we may discover more of them faster, right? Awesome. So if you notice, this is how uh, you can actually create an SSID sniffer using raw sockets without relying on any third party libraries. Now what this example in my mind illustrates that pretty much you can do uh, stuff without libraries if you knew what is happening underneath the library, right? And this is an illustration of just how. Uh, I don't know if any of you are good C programmers, but why don't you try writing this code in C? If I get time, I'll probably post the C version as well. Uh, and I can tell you that can be very interesting, right? Going back. So that's all for this video. However, if you're interested in probably trying out more of Python, have a look at the security tube Python scripting expert. We already have students from 73 countries taking it as of this, I would not say writing as of this speaking uh, and the Wi-Fi security expert course as well. That's all guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave your comments behind and see you in the next 
hack of the day video bye bye